the only reason they got into that debt was they saw possibilities of borrowing money and gambling on rising house prices or rising share prices. Now, the days of rising house prices are clearly over. Uh, there's a form of bubble taking place in the share market, but even there it hasn't reached back to the levels it was back in 2007. And when you deflate it by uh, inflation, it's nowhere near the level it was back in 2000. So it's a losing game, putting your money into the stock, stock market, even though there's been a short-term rise. There's a bubble in commodities, but even that's something which actually more the big boys get a chance to play with. Uh, I'd be horrified to see if a commodity speculative boom began with the American household sector being dragged into taking out contracts to speculate on rising commodity prices forever. Uh, because if you think share markets can fall quickly, watch what happens when commodities start falling. So it, it, it's insane to imagine there could be another debt-driven bubble. So therefore you've got to have a period of growth in the American economy which is driven by real changes in GDP, not by increasing levels of debt. And yet, at the same time, is going to be constrained by people's inability to invest because they have such huge debt servicing levels. Now that's the situation Japan's been in for the last 20 years. And I've really, for a long time, expected this crisis to be a bit like America turning Japanese, to take the old song. And they're turning Japanese by making exactly the same mistakes that they criticised the Japanese for making 20 years ago. And this was to, they said they should have um, shut down the zombie banks. This is what the Americans were telling the Japanese to do back in 1991, 92, is saying, shut down your zombie banks. They've lent too much money. They shouldn't have done it. They should be shut down. Eliminate the debt that way and start the whole system over again. Don't try to deficit spend your way out of trouble. Well, the Japanese kept the zombies alive and tried to deficit spend their way out of a kind of trouble. What are the Americans doing now? They're keeping the zombies alive. In fact, the zombies run the system. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and friends are dominating what's being done in economic policy in America. They're not being the zombies, they're feeding the zombies uh, and keeping the debt levels at those, at those high levels while deficit spending. Now, the, the great irony is they've managed to uh, attenuate the severity of the crisis by that deficit spending, which the Japanese did as well, of course, but unlike the Japanese, there's now a political consensus in America to get the, the, the government deficit down again. Now, when they start doing that, that means that the cash flow that the government sector gave that attenuated the decline is going to start being withdrawn. And when that withdrawal happens, rather than having a robust private sector economy, which is what the mainstream neoclassical economists expect, you're going to have a debt encumbered society where again you'll fall back down again. And that's starting to turn up in the, in the data as well. What I call a credit impulse, since it's based on work that other people beat me to, Biggs, Mayer and Peck, I've got to give them their acknowledgement. Uh, that shows the impact of changing debt levels on the change in aggregate demand. And it's a complicated argument, but it really comes down to the idea of, of acceleration. So if you look at, um, at the level of spending in the economy, and this is where I differ again from neoclassical economists who completely ignore the role of debt in their thinking. But aggregate demand is not just your income, it's your income plus the change in debt. Okay, so that's what enables you to buy uh, the new purchase of commodities, which is largely what GDP is, plus buying existing assets, which is what all the gambling on asset markets is about. So aggregate demand is the sum of GDP plus the change in debt. Now that means that the change in aggregate demand is the change in GDP plus the acceleration of debt. Now, what caused the boom was that acceleration was getting faster and faster, and you had rising levels of change in aggregate demand driven by rising, accelerating levels of debt. Then you hit the wall, and that acceleration turned into a matter of deceleration, and down you plunged. Now, by all the stimulus messages, me measures the, gov the government's done, and trying to encourage people to borrow money again, as well, they've slowed down that rate of decline in debt. Now, ironically, a slowdown in the rate of decline of something is an acceleration. When you look at the credit impulse in America, it's now turned positive. But for that to be maintained at a positive level, just like if you're, if you're in a car and you're decelerating less rapidly, so you're, you're, not, you're not slowing down as much, ultimately, to keep on doing that, you're going to accelerate again and start going forward rather than backwards. Well, for that to happen in America, for that pulse from credit to remain positive and, and push growth further, ultimately debt levels would need to rise again.
No, I just simply don't believe it's going to happen. Like you're, at a, you're in a Lamborghini doing 350 kilometres an hour and you slow down to 260, but then you're slowly starting to move, you know, you slowly, your, your rate of decline is getting slower and slower and then ultimately you're going to get faster and faster. You're not going to crack 350. You're going to get to a ceiling and slow down once more. So that fluctuation in the credit impulse is what's been happening in Japan for 20 years and because the Americans are making the same mistake of not abolishing that debt, they'll continue doing the same fluctuation as well. So they'll rise out and fall back down again. It'll be called a double dip, but by the time it's over, it'll be a quadruple dip. 